enjoy doing what I'm doing, and that is helping others. That's what my, my goal is here on YouTube, is to help others. Mike Gold State Picker in the garage with a little bit different video today. Nothing we found, nothing we sold. We're going to talk about the title, okay, about eBay. We're going to talk about a few things. We're going to try and give you some inspiration, something to think about. It's time for one of those videos. Yes, it's not always about the items we find or sell, that kind of thing. We also have to have some inspiration, some things to keep us on track some of that stuff, there's a lot of people out there struggling, trying to figure it out, trying to figure out how to make it all work, or they're having problems with it. And they're wondering, you know, watch our videos and you go, hey, these guys look like they never have any problems. Yeah, we have problems. We always do. We're no different than you. We have some experience that maybe is behind us that helps us uh, kind of get through it. So that may be a little bit different. So we talk about these kind of things occasionally on this channel. So if you're new, this is a little bit different video, so hang in there. Stick around to the end. I'll give you some words of wisdom to think about at the very end of the video. We're going to talk about eBay. We're going to talk about just stuff, all right? So let's get right into the title. Now, I've been sick for twice this year. I got COVID once I got back from North Carolina uh, during the holidays, and I was well. And all of a sudden, about uh, seven, eight days ago, I got sick again, but I didn't get COVID. So you can hear it in my voice. And, uh, you know, you get older, you it affects you a little bit differently. You just, you know, you don't have the same energy as you do when you're younger. So anyhow, I've been doing a whole lot of thrifting and that, but you still have to keep up with your shipping and all of that kind of stuff. I've been doing some books because it's not as difficult as getting in the car, getting out. I mean, in general. So I haven't been doing a lot of videos as far as uh, what is sold and what we found. And hopefully I'll be getting back into that once I, I get completely better. Hopefully a couple more days. So anyhow, you have time and you're sitting there and you're thinking because all of a sudden the problems, when you're busy, the problems don't seem to be magnified as much. But when you're kind of sick and you're hanging around the house a little bit more, a problem comes in and all that kind of stuff. Well, anyhow, uh, and I just got to thinking to myself uh, basically about the uh, eBay, the great eBay. Now, let me tell you, I'm not going to bash them completely. And I love eBay. I love Amazon. They are both tremendous platforms to sell your items on. So don't get me wrong, okay? I'm not here to bash them. I'm here to complain about something that I just don't understand why they can't fix it. And if you have problems with this, let me know. Again, it is continuing and that is non-payment, non-payment. I had four in a row, four in a row. And it brought me back to thinking about eBay and their great CEO, their CEO and all of the stuff that he was talking about, I think almost over a year ago, about how they were going to change the uh, payment. It was gonna be immediate payment. You were gonna have to pay immediately. And None of that's happened. Now, it has happened, I think, in some areas. But what I'm getting at here, I think, is where the problem continues to happen is the back and forth of the counteroffer offer. And then they, they, they know that if they get you to accept, they got that four-day window or whatever it is. And it ends up not being paid because you send payment reminder. And then everything gets jumbled up. And the great thing is about it is, if you think about it, how many of you have gotten this message from eBay? you have successfully canceled an order. I'm like, what are you talking about? They didn't pay. I didn't cancel the order. Guess who canceled the order? eBay, but they use it like, make it sound like you have canceled the order. No, I don't want to cancel the order. I want the guy to pay or the person to pay, period. That's what I want to happen. See, eBay and them, they twist things around. And that's the thing I don't like about the corporate culture and the co corporate situation we live in today. And it's frustrating for me to listen to eBay's CEO tell me what he's going to do and he doesn't do it. Let me tell you, that is corporate America. They really don't give a rip about you. They will tell you they do. That's called blowing smoke. Okay. They will tell you they do. But in reality, they only owe themselves to one person or a certain group of people. It's called the shareholders. They have to make money. 
So they really, you know, they've got to keep us on board. So occasionally they throw a crumb out there and say, hey, we're going to do this. And then hopefully you'll forget about it. And guess what? No, they maybe make a tweak here or a tweak there. They never completely fix it. There's no reason why eBay can't fix that. None. They just choose not to. But they lie to you. That's what they do. They basically lie to you. How many times have we seen that over and over with corporations, right? They they say, they, you know, uh, it's kind of like a, 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 a car that has a defect, right? And they know about it. Well, they look at it and they say, okay, look, if we stop production now, it's going to cost us, you know, X dollars. Now, if we just let it go out and then we have a recall, it costs us less. So let's just let it go out, you know. It, it, you can kind of see what, what I'm getting at here and the frustration you can have with corporate America. You know, all the way down from uh, all these layoffs, you're starting to see that. I live in tech, uh, uh, Silicon Valley, so I hear all this tech stuff about how Google and them are, were family. They were like our family. And all this stuff, you know, because you were getting free laundry, free daycare, free this, free that. And all of a sudden, uh, the papa and daddy say, no, we're laying you off. And you're going, well, we were family. No, it's not. It's a job. And and the, too much of that stuff, you know, it, that touchy-feely stuff was getting going on. And that's like the corporate world. It's not, I hate to say it, guys, it's there to give you a job if you can make it work. But also, it's there, okay, for another reason. And it's there to make money. And it's there to make money for these shareholders. There is a guy, a what they call an activist um, investor at Google. I think he has like 21% of the shares of Google or something. He is pressuring Google to lay off more people, cut salaries because they're so top heavy. And why is he doing that? Because he wants to make money. So he, either way we look at it, however we look at it, whatever spectrum you take it at, that is corporate America. The bottom line is these shareholders. They are so big, these companies now, it's really, really difficult, right? The other thing that we run into is the return policy of companies, right? The return policy of eBay. It's not much you can do. People always say, well, what do I do? You just accept the return and you kind of have to deal with it, okay? Yes, there are times where you are very frustrated. You know you're correct. That is another grievance that I have. I had a guy just recently who bought some CDs from me, and this gentleman uh, proceeded to tell me that two of them uh, were scratched, okay? And they weren't good enough for digital downloading he was doing. Radar went up. My radar instantly went up. I was being set up, I think. He was going to download all my CDs that I had sent him. There were only about 11 or 12, and then he was going to claim that there was something wrong. Well, 10 days later, I got the return request for the CDs. He's finished his downloading. Now he gives me back my CDs. And you can see what you see what I'm getting at. I feel like, okay, I know what happened there. He kind of slipped. He let this thing slide. He didn't have to say digital download, but it's just in his nature because that sounds like what he does. So those kind of things frustrate you. But all you can do is move on from that and continue to do your thing. Do your thing, right? We are... Uh, victims of the Amazon Costco return policies. That's basically the way that I look at this. They've changed the way returns happen. And you go, well, why does that happen? Well, they have, a, they're, they're, they're huge companies. Let's take Amazon. Amazon cannot battle every return. So it's easier for them to say, just send it back. They'd have to hire 40,000 agents to figure out what was not right, what wasn't right. It's just not worth it to them. But that trickles down to every one of us as resellers or business people. Because when I was in retail, that attitude carries down to the mom and pop level and can make it kind of crazy. Okay, can, can make it different and difficult on you because they think you're like Amazon and Costco. Why aren't you like them? Well, because number one, I don't have the volume and I don't have the money that they have. So, you know, we are affected there again with eBay. eBay always sides with the buyer. I mean, almost always. We can say 99.9%. .9%. There are some times you can win, but it's very difficult. And uh, I, I always like to flip it around the other way with eBay. Without sellers, you got nothing, eBay. And you need to get more sellers. You're losing sellers. eBay is not growing the seller side. 
the seller side is slowly declining. That's because there's so many people who don't understand it, the fees, all of this other stuff, and, and in general, they're losing uh, sellers. Okay, so, hey, I don't know. They don't see the writing on the wall. I, heard, I, th I thought I heard Don one time talk about how they've lost like 10% of their sellers, something like that. Well, if they lost 10% of their buyers, they'd be fired up and probably blame the sellers. But anyhow, long story short, you get where I'm coming from with all this stuff. The only way you can get through it is just to work through it. And so me being at home, these things started to kind of affect me. And I thought, well, you know, heck with it. I'm going to make a video about it. I'm going to make a video. All right. So <clears throat> you can do it. You can do it. It's just, it's not, hey, these videos uh, can look like they're easy. But again, we're just like you. Every one of us who do these videos, we have these issues behind the scenes. They come in bunches too. So we are, we are the same as you guys. Okay. Trust us. Trust us on that. All right, now, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, I had a cough. All right, let's get into a comment that I got. I, I, I love, I read all my comments. If you've been on my channel long enough, you know I read all the comments. And I found this comment, and I thought to myself, okay, again, this is, this is a weird thinking to me, okay? Tell me if I'm wrong. If you think this is wrong, let me know. Basically, here's the comment. And the gentleman, I'm going to put it up here so you can see it. Uh, the person or, or whoever this is says, it, it was about my video of Goodwill versus Savers, that video. I was comparing them and all that kind of stuff. And he's, he's challenging, me, challenging me a little bit. It says here, Goodwill didn't change their business model in 1999 to online auctions. They changed it, what, a couple of years ago? It's common sense and math. You have hundreds of people posting videos on YouTube telling people, you can do it too. It's easy. Here's how to do it. Combine with people looking for ways to make extra money or replace their lost jobs in an every, every increasingly volatile world of business and work. You'd be naive and fooling yourself to believe that you haven't created, uh, created competition for sourcing. That's us. The YouTubers, the YouTube people like me, Kevin, uh, Matt, part-time picker, Cincinnati picker, all of them, all of them. He's talking about all of this. I have been reselling for 15 years and I would never give away my secrets. I just wish people like you would realize what you're doing. But I imagine some of you are making enough money from YouTube that it's too enticing. I believe it's only a matter of time that the business will be so saturated, it will be nearly impossible to make money actually reselling. So this is the gentleman's comment. And I, I look at this and you know, we, we hear me talk about negative attitudes and negative ways that we think this is negative thinking. Throughout time, people have been giving away uh, secrets, okay? It, it, it's just human nature where we're not giving away these, what, what you call secrets, we're teaching. We're trying to get people to, hey, understand this is what's going on. Um, I may not give you a, for example, I'm trying to get give you an idea. I may not give you the exact spot that I go to get my bins, but I tell you kind of how to get the bins, sort of where you got to go to get bins. That is something that you keep uh, to yourself, basically. Um, but you know, uh, you think about all these companies that, that have secrets, secrets are like Kentucky fried chicken's recipe, Coca-Cola's recipe. Uh, those things you don't let out, right? But there are plenty of chefs out there who have taught people how to make, you know, um, a certain dish, right? That they have at their restaurant. This is how we make it. it it's like, why would you give that away? Someone says, well, there's nuances within each business that make it just a little bit different, right? The ambiance of eating it at a restaurant versus eating it at home. These little things make it different. So uh, I'm not giving away anything. I'm showing you my knowledge to help you find out this is something that you could resell, okay? Now, if you want to call that a secret, that's, that's kind of crazy. That's not a secret. That's imparting some knowledge to give somebody a chance to say, hey, you can do what I'm doing, right? Uh, in, in, and, and 
basically learning. It's teaching. Um, we're not giving away uh, anything that anybody already doesn't know, basically. Really, if you think about it, reselling has been going on for years. And uh, it's been trickled down from person to person. You hear me talk about networking over and over. You know, 10 years ago, somebody was telling somebody about this, do this, do this, do this. There, so are those people that at just as much fault as YouTubers? Because they created and it's grown. But this is what this is drives me nuts is somebody focuses so much energy, it seems like, on that rather than just going out and doing it. And I can tell you that, uh, for example, today, uh, I went out, I went thrifting, uh, I did go to a flea market, uh, found some paperbacks, nothing great. But I told my wife, she happened to be with me, I said, let's go stop at the Goodwill. So she said, okay. So we stopped at the Goodwill and I happened to walk in and bing, there's a CPAP machine, an AdSense, uh, an AirSense 10 uh, CPAP machine, $400 for $16. 118 hours on it when I got home. And all I'm saying is, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, it's the fact that you just get up and do something that gets you a, a bit of luck. I happened to luck into that. I happened to know what that was. And I'm just saying that I think reselling is gonna continue to keep going and keep going and going and going and there's just going to be different ways and different levels and people will adjust. I'm not giving away any secrets. I'm not giving nothing. I'm giving away some knowledge, some knowledge to help something to impart upon you. That's kind of what I'm doing here. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not Hey, Plenty of YouTubers make good money on YouTube. Okay. Uh, I make money on YouTube. Uh, I didn't put that in my numbers. Uh, if you add all my affiliates and some YouTube stuff, it's about a thousand dollars a month. Okay, that's to some people that's a lot of money. That's good money. It's, I love it. Thousand dollars, I'd take that all day long. But I put a lot of money, uh, not all money. I put a lot of effort and time into uh, this. So, you know, but I'm not getting rich off it. I enjoy doing this. Meet me in the field. Meet me in Saver. Sometimes I enjoy doing what I'm doing, and that is helping others. That's what my my goal is here on YouTube is to help others. Period. All right, let's get into uh, something else I was thinking about really quick. We're going to kind of go over this, and then we'll give you the uh, little inspiration at the end. Uh, basically, you know, uh, every year I, you, you kind of reassess yourself a little bit. Kind of take yourself and look at it and say, hey, what am I doing? Uh, this is April is going to be four years. I'm going to take a look at my four-year number. It's going to be kind of interesting to see where I went from year one to year four. going to be kind of interesting. But... Every year about uh, you know Christmas time, I start to think, okay, what am I going to do? How do I want to perceive myself to be in four years, five years, or this year? So you make micro adjustments and adjustments. And, you know, being sick, uh, again, you start to think. And anyhow, I am really becoming uh, very picky. And I am trying my best to find the best of the best, that kind of thing. I am no longer trying to chase the the craziness right the uh, I mean I I was out there early on really really grinding hard churning it out so now it's just a little bit slower process so every one of us have to figure that out it's finding your level right your happiness that that is important here um, what gives you the balance in your life that's that's the key here right you hear this over and over um, I want balance right balance. A lot of you have kids, a lot of you are working, so it is this balance. How do you find it? And that's key because you don't want to lose the enthusiasm for reselling uh, or be discouraged. So you just have to kind of find a nice level, guys. Find that nice level. I think sometimes we have to experience the over-the-edge feeling. That's what I'm talking about, where you're really going hard. You're pushing so hard and you're doing really well, but you're going, you know what? This isn't what I want either. This is too much right? Too much. So you need to know when to pull it back. And that's what I'm talking about here is I'm trying to figure out where I want to pull it back and uh, want to know that I've gone a bit too far. So that's the kind of thinking I've got going right now. 
Uh, and a good thing is, is to slow down and to see what happens with sales, see what happens with your budget, see what happens. So these are the things that we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out where our level should be so that we can have a very, hopefully, simple uh, life. It's not going like, boom, 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 you know, up, down. You want to kind of keep it sort of level, sort of level. We want, we want that, right? So all of that is what was been on my mind since I've been sick. And, uh, you know, we just have to spend our time uh, on quality things that improve us, basically. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Find the things that are making our life better, more quality, that kind of thing. Sometimes we chase everything around and it's hectic kids, whatever, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we've got to make sure that we uh, uh, we just figure out that level that we're looking for. All right. Now, basically, <clears throat> if you're new, I, I always like to give some inspiration, period, that's just me. I really think that this can be done for a lot of people. Uh, it takes time. It's not easy uh, at all. Okay. Uh, these videos, again, you see our stuff, you see our sales, all that kind of stuff. But behind the scenes, we're like you. We're grinding. We're figuring things out. All right. But here's something to think about. I got this here. What are you doing tomorrow that will make a difference? See, if you don't do something different starting tomorrow to make a difference, guess what? It's going to be the same. And that way you can guess what the next five years will be like. Look at the last five, because the next five are going to be like the last five. Unless tomorrow you change it all, or change a little, or something, or don't change. It's choice time, you can do whatever you want, but it's nice to know any day you can change your life. Any day. That's how you have to think about it. You have to think, hey, tomorrow I can make the change. Okay, well, maybe tomorrow it doesn't happen. But you always got the next day. But you don't want to keep pushing it off. You have to make the change. You have to do something different. So if you're struggling, think about that. Think about how you can do it differently. What is it that I'm doing that needs to change? Okay? So that's something to think about. But anyhow, I, I hope I gave you something in this video. Something to think about for uh, for a little bit. Uh, a little different than what we found, what we sold. I'll have another one of those up uh, in a couple of days. Uh, I, I got to get in here and do more stuff that is going to help you guys. That is my... One of my main focuses this year is to try to figure out, hey, Mike, let's get in here, give them the meat and potatoes of something so that they can take from it and then grow and grow the business and figure out, hey, this is what I want to do and this is how I want to go. So, all right. Hopefully I will be able to do that for you. Uh, I appreciate again, every one of you. If you got a comment, leave it down below and I will see you in my next video. So thanks again.